The principle of conditions has to do with a, an understanding that we can have different um, processes, different problems going on in the body, where on the surface they may be, uh, appear to be quite the same, when in reality the underlying mechanism that produced them is going to be quite very different. So in particular, what we're describing is a condition. A condition is where there has been some kind of, usually a physical injury to the body, and it exceeded your body's ability to be able to properly compensate for it, okay? So a beautiful example or perfect example of that is that of a broken bone. You know, it doesn't matter if you are the strongest man or woman on planet Earth. There's a certain capacity that if you hit a bone hard enough, it is going to fracture. If you hit a joint hard enough, the ligament will tear, it will dislocate. And on the other end of that are kinds of conditions where the, the body is normally able to, to heal for this and we think nothing of it. Um, you know, bruises, boo-boos, tiny little bleeds, things like that. We, we take it for granted that, okay, we have these kinds of things and it's supposed to go away. Now, the reason that this is ultimately important is it has to do with people's uh, awareness about the different kinds of physical conditions in particular that can actually occur. So when we're talking about the, the big, the obvious ones, so when we're talking about a, a fracture, when we are talking about a, um, a dislocation or what's otherwise known as a grade three ligament tear, it's where you've torn all of the fibers and you've got, you know, two surfaces that are, you know, basically completely unstable, completely disarticulated, um, and or where you're dealing with what's called a grade two ligament injury, where the thing, if this is like a joint surface per se, has shifted beyond, you know, 50% of its normal, you know, range there, and as a consequence, it's moving way, way, way too much, it's not stable. These are the kinds of things, and this is the realm of the orthopedic surgeon. And usually the types of injuries that produce these, they're pretty obvious, they're pretty evident. They're the things that happen and you've got a lot of physical discomfort and so you go to the emergency room and they do some tests, hopefully, and they identify these things and then they say we either need to do a surgical procedure or we need to do some kind of other treatment or intervention to ultimately stabilize that. So that's usually you know pretty obvious, pretty evident. On the other end of the spectrum then, are, as we said, the little bruises, the bumps, the boo-boos, the things that we presume, oh, okay, yep, we had that knock, we had that spill, but they're so small that we think nothing of them. And normally that is going to be just fine, to, to tell you the truth. We can go to the gym, we can work out too hard, we can have sore muscles. These are the things that are supposed to happen. We can actually even have a, a little bit of a muscle tear to the point where we get um, you know, bruising, bleeding on the, the inside there. But the same thing, it typically heals and it goes away on its own. And we can do you know, physical exercise or we can do stretches or massages, different kinds of things for that. But what I am you know, needed to let people know about is that there are other kinds of injuries that can still exist in that space. The space between, it's not dangerous, it's not gonna kill or cripple you, but it's also not nothing either. And these are what are called the grade one ligament injuries. So maybe there was an injury where there was no initial pain, no bleeding, broken bones, bruising, or boo-boos really at all. You thought you got away with it, but you can have those kinds of injuries to the joint, say the joint structure like this, where essentially what they do is they shift and they get stuck, not moving properly within their normal range of motion. And normally we're only talking about something that's gonna be a couple of millimeters worth in magnitude. And you might be saying, okay, Jeff, well really what's the, what's the big deal with that? The big deal with that is because not so much what happens per se in that moment, but because of the effect of compound interest. So imagine compound interest and let's make it really, really small. We'll say like 1% or 2% or even one half of 1%. You know, in the very beginning, that is not going to cause too much change from the day to day, from the year to year. But if you multiply that compound interest effect over the span of months, years, or even decades, all the while, 
not being aware of what's actually going on beneath the surface. That actually allows it to start to accumulate. And as it accumulates, depending where it is in your body and what kind of neurophysiological impact it's happening, it starts to produce negative momentum, ultimately leading to a series of different health issues. And it can be then people say, well, I don't know what's causing this. And, you know, I'm having this test done and that test done, but nobody can seem to find what's going on. A, because they're probably not looking in just the right spot, but B, and this is probably the reason why, is because there was no brand new injury and many a people do not think to connect current symptomatology with, for example, something that may have happened years or even decades ago. And it's usually not until all of the evidence is collected and then we put it all together and we identify, aha, that thing that you thought you got away with, that you had dismissed, or even that the emergency room doctors and the paramedics, they said, okay, it's not in the kill you, cripple you kind of thing, but it was in that somewhere in between phase right there, and it's been accumulating, causing issues over a long period of time. In our own experience, those are the kinds of issues that are most likely to actually produce problems for people, and thus, that's why we oftentimes fall into the gray zone in terms of actually identifying them. So simply put, the message here is that just because a person may think that they get away with something, it's always a good idea, especially if it's like, wow, I can't believe I got away with that, or maybe I should get that looked at. Yeah, maybe you probably should, um, just to make sure that it's not gonna be something that's gonna come back and bite you much, much later. That then is how you can protect yourself and increase the probability of you staying well for many years to come.